we're going to be doing a power adapter fix on this Gateway laptop. Now if you look what happened to the adapter, the tip is damaged and the inside of that tip, the plastic, is actually missing. It's stuck in the power jack on that laptop. So our first priority is to get that plastic out of there. And then we're going to need to repair the actual AC adapter. We're just going to replace the tip. And that's if the jack is okay. Once I pull this plastic out, it might, we might find that the jack is not okay and we have to replace the jack. But first things first, I'm just using a small, like tiny set of screwdrivers. I think I got it $1 for $1 at Micro Center. I just picked the tiniest one there. And I'm going to use that and try to pry out the plastic that's stuck in the power jack. And I got it loose, and then I just grabbed a thin set of needle nose pliers and pulled out the plastic, and here is the culprit. Now the inside of that jack is clean, it's clear. I'm going to take my voltmeter out and make sure that nothing got damaged in that jack. I'm just going to see if there's any short circuits by setting the meter for continuity which is where you hear that little beep most me meters make a beep when you touch the two leads together and I'm going to touch the inside pin of the power jack and a ground point and if I hear a beep then I know there's a short circuit and there was damage done to the jack if I don't hear a beep then I'm going to assume it's okay and it looks like it's okay so we're going to try a power adapter a different power adapter in this machine to see if it powers on. Now this is actually a blooper that I'm keeping in the video. We'll see how sharp you guys are. So I plug in the new power adapter and I push the power button and nothing's happening. Can you guys tell me why nothing's happening? You might have to rewind it to see it. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward this because I mess around with it for a while, wondering why it's not powering on. I even take off the hinge cover, inspect the button, take out a couple screws, try to figure out what the problem is. Everything looks okay. And then I realize I forgot to attach the part that plugs into the wall to the actual power brick right there. It happens. If you did spot that, good for you. So now when I plug it in, and I test the button, we get power, and everybody's happy. So it appears that the power jack is good, and we just need to repair the power adapter. Just wanted to show you I make mistakes too. Now to replace the tip on the power adapter. And this is the power adapter in question that we're going to fix. We're just going to cut that tip off. Make sure it's not plugged in as you do this. We're going to cut it off right at that point. We'll make sure all the wire below that point is good and there's no crimps in it or, or bends or breaks in it. Now I'm going to just take a little pair of uh, pliers here and remove the outer casing from the wire there. It might be wise to use um, wire strippers, which I do not have right now, but it might be wise to use wire strippers just in case you don't cut that wire and break it. But my trusty little blue snippers do okay. Just don't put too much pressure when you close it. Now we're going to wrap up that outside ground wire, which is the bare wire. And once we're sure that those wires are not touching, we're going to plug the AC adapter into the wall and test to make sure we're getting the correct voltage to those wires. Now I didn't do it with the bad tip on it because the tip is bad. So now that we remove the bad tip, we're going to be able to check if this adapter is putting out the proper voltage. So I'm putting the black on the bare wire and I'm putting the red onto the white wire. 
and it's slowly giving us a charge, which is not a terribly good sign. It may be my voltmeter's acting a little flaky. Battery might be running low. So let's try that again. Or the wires were loose or something was loose. We'll give it one more try. If it does that again, the power adapter might be a little flaky. It might be on its way out. It might not be able to put out the amps that it needs. And that time it goes pretty much straight to 18. Now sometimes those power bricks take a little bit of time to charge. But that usually shows a sign of weakness when that happens. You're also going to notice the part coming out of the power brick is frayed as well on this power adapter. So that's going to need to be repaired too. I have another power adapter here up on the bench and I'm testing as well as this one. And I'm just going to pick the stronger of the two, which turns out to be the one that doesn't have that frayed part coming out of the brick itself. Just make sure that the voltages and amperages match up on your power adapters when you're mixing and matching them. So I'm going to bring out the heat shrink tubing here. I use heat shrink tubing instead of electrical tape because it, it forms a bond. It makes it more professional and, and tougher for the customer to peel away the work that you did. And I'm using a Radio Shack adapter plug here. And this is going to be a little bit of a crude way of doing the, the power adapter repair. But it's pretty solid and it makes a good connection. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just sand right now I'm going to sand the leads that go into that adapter plug. See that adapter plug is meant to be plugged into another adapter. And it gets really expensive at Radio Shack when you start buying adapter upon adapter. So sometimes I like to solder the leads for the power adapter directly to the leads on the adapter plug. But since they aren't meant for solder, I'm sanding them off, I'm scuffing them up so that when I do solder the leads to that adapter plug, the solder makes a great connection, it's strong, a good bond, which won't break. Let me just zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Notice that's a size N adapter plug. That's a pretty popular brand, a pretty popular size. Most gateways, Toshiba's use a size N. And I'm just scuffing the metal of those leads. So when I drop some solder on there, it'll stick really well. Now I'm going to pull the soldering iron out. This is the soldering iron I use. As you can tell, I like Radio Shack. They're not the cheapest, but they always have what I want. And I'm just using a piece of scotch bright there to get the remaining solder off of the uh, soldering iron, if you see it in the soldering iron holder there. And basically what we're going to do is attach those two wires to those two leads on the adapter plug. I'm going to expose some wire on the white lead there. Now again, you have to sand these wires, both the ground wire and the positive wire. You need to sand them because the little wires in these, these power adapters are coated. And solder doesn't like to stick to that when they're coated. There's little strands in there that are coated. And you'll notice once you sand these wires on these power adapters, if you're doing a repair like I'm doing, you're going to start to expose copper on the wires. When you start to see copper on those wires, then you know you're getting that coating off and the solder will stick very readily to the copper. So it's going to be tough to get solder to stick to these wires unless you do what I'm doing now. Sand the strands of wire inside the power adapter lines there until you see copper. And once you start to see the copper, you'll know that your solder is going to stick and make a good bond and not break off. Okay, now that that's done and we have some copper exposed, we know that our solder is going to stick. 
just make sure you get enough of that copper exposed that you're confident your solder job is going to be okay. Okay, now here's what I'm talking about. Those are the strands of wire that I was sanding, and you'll see a tinge of copper now on the those ends of those wires because I sanded it. Now we know our solder will stick. If we didn't do this, you'd have a tough time getting solder to stick to those wires, trust me. You might be asking now, why don't they just buy a new power adapter? Well, you could do that too, but if you want to learn how to do this, I'm showing you.